Hey, folks. Ever wondered how we'd fight off deadly infections without our trusty antibiotics? Let me tell you, it was no walk in the park. Today, we're diving into the gripping, somewhat gooey tale of the discovery of antibiotics. Buckle up, because this is one roller coaster of a ride through the history of medicine. It's the pre antibiotic era, and things look grim. Bacterial infections are deadly. Something as simple as a splinter could send you on a one way trip to the afterlife. Scientists knew they had a microbial problem on their hands. But how to tackle it? Enter our hero, Alexander Fleming. Now, Fleming was a bit of an oddball, not your run of the mill scientist. He was also a bit of a messy worker, but little did he know that this would lead to one of the most important discoveries in medical history. Our story starts in 1928 in London. Fleming had just returned from vacation to find his lab looking like a teenager's bedroom after a weekend alone. One Petri dish in particular caught his eye. It was growing Staphylococcus, a bacteria known to cause boils, sore throats, and abscesses. But this Petri dish had something unusual. It was also growing a bit of mold, probably from a spore that had floated in through a window. Now, most of us would have thrown it away, right? But Fleming, being the curious cat he was, noticed something amazing. Around this fuzzy blue-green mold, there was a clear halo where the Staphylococcus bacteria weren't growing. The mold seemed to be producing something that killed the bacteria. Fleming was onto something. That mold was none other than Penicillium notatum, and that something Fleming decided to call it penicillin. But remember, folks, it's the 1920s. We didn't have the tech to mass produce this wonder drug. So while Fleming had a promising lead, the world still lacked a practical antibiotic. Now, let's leap ahead to 1930, eight, over to the other side of the Atlantic, where we meet two new players, Howard Florey and Ernst Chain at Oxford University. They saw the potential in Fleming's work and set out to expand on it. Through trial, error, and a lot of moldy mess, Flory and Chain managed to purify enough penicillin to test it on a patient. And guess what? It worked. The patient's condition improved dramatically. However, they were still facing the challenge of production. The game-changing moment happened when they teamed up with American Laboratories which had the resources for large-scale production. They played around with different strains of the mold, brewing methods, even tried growing it in everything from milk bottles to bedpans. Yeah, science can be weird. Eventually, they hit the jackpot. They figured out how to mass-produce penicillin just in time to treat wounded soldiers in World War II. This marked the dawn of the antibiotic era. In the decades that followed, Scientists discovered more and more antibiotics. Diseases that had once been death sentences were now treatable. Life expectancy shot up. It was a total game changer. Now, while we have come a long way since Fleming's messy lab discovery, the journey isn't over. Today, we're facing new challenges like antibiotic resistance. But just like Fleming, Flory, and Chain, we're not backing down. Scientists all over the globe are working tirelessly to find new ways to fight off these superbugs. So that's the incredible journey of the discovery of antibiotics, a story that proves that sometimes life-saving breakthroughs can come from unexpected places. And remember, folks, always take your full course of antibiotics. We don't want to create any superbugs. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more thrilling tales from the history of science. Stay curious, keep exploring, and catch you next time.